I'm Jason Mader, Professor J. Deb Desai is in the Wallace H. Coulter Department of Biomedical Engineering. This is a partnership we have with Emory. We're going to walk through your lab and look at four projects. This one is about breast cancer, right? Yes. So in this case, uh, we are essentially trying to determine if there are changes in the uh, breast tissue between normal and cancerous breast tissue. And here, for example, uh, we, are, we have this small uh, breast tissue cores and we want to figure out if there are changes in the electrical mechanical properties of these breast tissues as they progress say from normal to cancerous tissue and this is pretty much a big setup here and what we are going after now is trying to develop a portable desktop diagnostic device something very so, small something very small exactly and so here we can put a, a sort of a breast tissue chunk at the center we have a micro heater so now in addition to the electrical and mechanical properties, we can actually even figure out if there are changes in the thermal properties. And our studies have shown that there are changes between normal and cancerous breast tissue. Uh, the second project, and these are all uh, medical robotics projects. This is about uh, brain and, and brain tumors, right? Right, so currently, for example, in, the, uh, uh, in surgery, you, you can operate in the line of sight. And essentially, you can operate what you see. And what we are trying to do is to essentially have the capability where uh, you can operate out of the line of sight. So for example, if you introduce the robot inside, and then you can see as this, this robot, as you can see here, it's bent and it's uh, moving. So you can essentially get to the entire tumor and use sort of the MR image feedback, magnetic resonance imaging, and be able to do the whole thing with much more dexterity than what is currently possible. So send a robot into the brain right. that is able to sweep from side to side to have more right. flexibility. And it is 3D printed. So this oh. can be patient specific and you can actually 3D print the entire robot. This is, this is for brain hemorrhage, but again, a, a robotic device that goes into the brain that is very flexible. Right, so as you can see here, he is able to position this for accurate insertion point into the brain and now he's advancing the robot inside and once you're inside you can now pretty much this robot has the ability to have the roll joint motion capability and a tip that you can bend and be able to remove the hemorrhage that is there inside. We're going to move on to the fourth project but let's be clear surgeons aren't using robots like that in these right, ways. Right, not for hemorrhage evacuation, that's right, yeah. So this one is a very flexible project because it has a variety of applications, but it's a steerable guide wire, is that right? Yeah, so as an example, uh, if you have, uh, if a patient has peripheral arterial disease and if there is a blockage, say for example, on this side, the, uh, the clinician has to introduce a guide wire from this side, go over the arch, and then come down. And so as you can see here, which is and almost to scale uh, from a human anatomical model, you can see that it is sort of a tortuous pathway. A lot of the guide twists wire, and turns. You would that's think. right, that the guide wire has to go through. And what we are interested in essentially is trying to develop a technology where you can steer the end of the guide wire because as you can see, if you're trying to get a guide wire to a blockage and it comes here, there's no way to get around it. So you want to be able to steer it, get around the blockage. And this is just a very simple, illustration here where you can just pull this and as you can see here you can see this uh, guide wire prototype though not the guide wire used in clinic but it is to scale uh, to demonstrate that concept and the applications of something like this are huge I mean you can not only just work in the uh, in the peripheral arterial disease case but you can now actually apply it in neurosurgery as well as pretty much anything where you have a long sort of a flexible uh, device and you need to be able to steer it. Great. Those are four projects from JW Desai's RoboMed Lab, and you can find more at robomed.gotech.edu.